Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan, also known as the Medieval Genie, and today I've switched to a small sword, and you may even notice from a distance, it's got an unusual look in a pommel. Now this is a temporary look, and it is a sort of a physical experiment on the concept that we're talking about today, to do with changing the weight and size of pommels, and the fact that bigger and heavier pommels aren't necessarily better, especially. So, this type of sword, although it's not the usual kind of sword that I use, it's something that can be used in historical European martial arts. It's a obviously blunt, this isn't a sharp item, it's a training sword. But its handling is designed to be a small sword, and hence it basically never does cutting, and is entirely focused on thrusting. Now, its normal pommel, I'm not going to switch back because it's It'll take a bit too long in a video to take this type of nut off and on. Um, but it usually has this type of iron pommel. Now, there are enough jokes and things on a Scalagrim channel about end them rightly and all that. But seriously though, this is quite a hefty pommel. And if I threw it at someone, it would cause quite an injury. But because of all this weight, which is entirely in the back, and bearing in mind where pommels are positioned and leverage and all that, I'm not an expert at physics, but basic leverage, the further away you are when you're putting that force, the easier it is to have an effect. Hence, if you've got a pommel right at the back, it has a significant effect on the balance of the sword. Now, this is quite intentional, because it means that you don't have to have a long thing, you don't have to have anything going too far, sticking miles out of the bottom of the handle, but it's back enough that it's behind the hand still well, either on the sort of the bottom, the base of the hand, or even slightly past the hand, depending on, you know, the, the shape and size and design of the sword. But um, with it back-weighted, this causes a degree of control which is closer to the hand. So when I'm using this small sword, because it is so back-weighted, even with the modification, we're still looking at balance point about here. So it's very close to the hand only about a couple of inches away. So when I wish to do things like, let's say someone did a stab at me and I take them offline and engage for a thrust, that sort of basic type of technique, or if I'm just wanting to engage, disengage, sort of play around, see what the person's doing, or just immediately take the initiative and drive in for a thrust, I've got a lot of force here near the hand and there is always that whole forte foible I've talked about in other videos, but you're normally easily beaten aside when you're being sort of struck about here, towards the tip of your sword, because it's so far away from your hand. And when you're struck here, you can resist more. But the balance of the sword also has some effect on this. The more forward-weighted the sword, the more forgiving it is for that type of action. So if I switch to this for a second, this is a sword I forged which is based on sort of Yatagan, Falcata type of design. So it's the polar opposite of the small sword. This is very forward weighted, it's balanced almost in the middle of the item, which for a sword is very front heavy. And with a lack of pommel and just having a wooden grip, hence it's changed it to that balance point. And when I deliver some sort of beat, so let's say I'm trying to get past the opponent's sword and get towards them, so adding that strike, it's got more forward weight. So for the same weight of sword, and for the same size of sword, because it's so weighted forwards, it's got more force and more of the strength that I have, you know, the same human body, the same strength in the shoulders, the arms, the same amount of force I'm adding with the rest of my body moving behind it. It's more efficient I can put more of the sword into that beating action or into a cut. And that's one of the reasons why I love using this actually for doing practice since I can't go out and do sparring, what with the pandemic and all that. Or if I want to do test cutting, this is a sword that really lends itself to that cutting action. Whenever I deliver a cut, for the same weight, for the same, you know, general sort of shape and size of the sword, because that weight is so far forwards, it's a monster at cutting, I'll tell you. So, 
I deliver my cut with that force, not staying in the hand but going into the blade, it then cuts and powers its way through. So delivering a cutting strike, although further back if I was trying to do a cut and I ended up quite close to the handle, it wouldn't cut as efficiently, but in its sweet spot where I'm supposed to be hitting with, that's where it actually ends up more lethal than before. So for those beating and chopping actions, this is fantastic. So, going back to this, bearing in mind that those are the sorts of swords that I'm used to, switching to an iron pommel like this brings the weight further back on a small sword. And it, it I mean, it's currently about, yeah, here, a couple of inches in front of the handle, whereas it was practically, you know, meeting the handle with its balance point before. Now, if you're doing something like point control, so I can do a lot of... If I wish to move the tip of the sword, you'll see here, I move my hand very slightly and very gently, and I can do a lot of disengage, let's say, your sword is here, we're sort of meeting up, see if I can get the line, so like this. If your sword is here, you can stab towards me. If I take you slightly offline, then I've got the line I can thrust at you you know, while the sword is safe. It's, it's general sort of fighting mechanics. This happens with all types of swords. Getting what's called the line, so if I'm off pushed aside like this, I'm a very open target. If I control the line like this, then I've got control. That means I can hit someone and I'm not likely to be hit unless they have to disengage and try something new. So with that, that's why sometimes people prefer a lower and closer to the hand balance point. Because it means that you've got more of the weight down here, close to the hand, in that forte, the lower half of the sword, where you can push somebody aside, you can more easily sort of control everything. Starting from down here, the point moves more vigorously for less force and movement, whereas if I try to do the same thing of this, a lot of the force is down, down here in front of, you know, on the actual front half of the blade, so I can still do those sorts of actions. I can still maybe try to bind, disengage, thrust, all of that. It's not like it suddenly goes from being easy to impossible, but it certainly has a noticeable effect. Trying that sort of game where I'm playing with a bind, here's someone's sword in front of them, I meet them, I try to see if I can gain purchase, or can I control the line, no, disengage, ah, here I am, thrust, all of that kind of cool stuff. It's harder with this sword because of its front weight, but with this sword, it's very easy. I can do the disengage and re-engage with incredible ease, and that's what this sword is designed for. Apart from the obvious, it's designed to be a slender stabbing blade and not a cutting blade. There is also the degree of how you control things. If I'm using something like this Falcata, I'd see a person's sword, maybe they're out extended like this, trying to keep me at bay, and I want to go, okay, what can I do? Can I cut at them somewhere, or can I just go, beat them aside, cut them open? This is a completely different game to, if I tried it with this sword, I'm going, ding, I'm sort of hitting their sword, but nothing's getting purchased and just sort of rebounding off them. It would be useless. Whereas, with this bottom-weighted sword, I could go, hmm, well, can I control them? Maybe try to get their blade down here. So maybe I'm trying to engage near the tip of their sword, gently push them off line, thrust and stab them, all of this. So if I have this iron pommel on this particular sword, it would do that more so. The weight would be brought down further, and doing that sort of action becomes easier. It lends itself more to that type of disengage and lends itself more to the sort of play where I'm controlling things more around the hand. So I'm trying to control the person's sword and keep it basically next to my hand and then do the usual sorts of actions that I've described earlier. With this, however, I've decided that I actually would want, I'll probably make one later out of copper or maybe I'll forge one out of iron, but I will have it of a lighter design or something else that 
you know, helps to bring the point of balance a bit further forward. Because normally the types of swords I use personally are cutting swords. So it's more like this. Front weighted, beat the person sword aside, engage with cuts, do what I want, a lot of easy swift movement and I've got more presence. Although, like I said with the whole forte foible, I've got more control close to the hand and then away from the hand I'm more easily pushed aside and can't do much. You know, this is the whole, if I'm bound up like this, I couldn't really push their sword and I'd probably, down here, I'd go shh, push them aside. Up here, I'd more get pushed aside. But with the forward weight, it's more forgiving and I can do that type of action with the front part of the sword where the cutting action happens more easily. So hence, because I'm someone who has ex you know, been practicing and become experienced with cutting swords for so many years, it's basically that if I'm in some sort of sparring, for every hundred strikes that I attempt, more than 90 of them will be cuts. So switching to something like a small sword, yes, for someone who's experienced in small sword, and, or perhaps things like rapier, or perhaps things like uh, sport fencing of the foil, that sort of iron pommel and heavier pommel, more back-weighted design, would suit them better. So hence, I wouldn't say this is an inferior design, I'm not saying this is a bad product, it's just designed for the sorts of people who use these things. But, being the person as I am, I am experienced with front-heavy blades, so hence, even when I'm trying to be a person who uses a small sword, keeps the action close to the hand, does that kind of bind, slide and thrust and all of that and gain the line in that type of action with thrusting and with the small sword, I am still going to be leaning towards trying things like a beat, even if I know that I can't do much in terms of a cutting or beating action with this sword, I'll probably still try to do maybe end up in the middle of the blade, that gotcha type of thing, as opposed to more proper bind, engage type of stuff. So having a more forward weight will lend itself to that better. The more back weighted it is, the more ineffective things like beats and cuts and those sorts of actions become. So it lends itself more to control from the hand, easy for disengage, thrust, those sorts of things. But uh, the more forward weighted it is, the more it lends itself to those sorts of beats and cuts. So, with that, that's why I think that although you do sometimes see people going on about trying to have big pommels and all of that, you do see sometimes on cutting swords, you see, and this is the problem where we get the, you know, the uh, bad designs sometimes, you see swords and actually was the case with my archer sword that I reviewed a few years ago. That had a very heavy pommel, it was about a pound in weight. So it was a cutting sword, and when it lost its pommel, it actually broke during the video. Um, when the pommel came off, although obviously it was sort of tapering down, I was worried it would kind of slip out of my hand, in terms of the actual sort of the leverage and the ability to cut, the ironic thing is when it broke, it felt better because it's got quite it had a broad front heavy type of blade something similar to this that's clearly it can you know it's got a sharp point to thrust but it's clearly designed more to cut because it had such a massive bulky overweight pommel it brought the point of balance very far back and i found that i'd say this sword would cut better than that archer sword now this sword is probably about pound in weight, so it's an incredibly lightweight sword. But yet, the archer's sword, which has a longer blade, which makes for easier cutting, leverage and all that, and also has more weight, it was about three pounds, which is, I'd say, about the heaviest you can get a one-handed sword before you're starting to get a bit bulky and overweight. Despite all of that, so the statistically heavier sword, more length, broader blade, all of these things that should tell me the archer sword cuts better, when I physically held it in the hand, it was terrible. I tried to cut, and yes, I did manage cuts with it, but 
it was quite an awkward process. It, I felt the sword was kind of... It's almost like you're cutting with a normal sword, and it's like you've got a ball and chain attached to your wrist. That's the best way I can describe it. There was, there was a, a weight feeling around the area of the hand that was kind of not helping me to cut. It was actually pulling me back. It was stopping me from cutting. It was sort of dragging me instead of letting me do my job. And that is a bad performance. It's a poor design of sword. So, hence, if you have a pommel that is too big and heavy on a cutting sword, or you have too little counterbalancing on a rear-weighted thrusting sword, you can end up with very poor handling that actually makes it perform worse, even though the rest of the construction is brilliant. So, hence, this is something I'd recommend when purchasing swords, and also for bladesmiths and things making swords, Bear in mind the effect that a pommel has. The counterbalance isn't necessarily a good thing, it can actually be a bad thing. So yeah, that's probably a lot of waffling about all of those types of designs and blades. And if you're wondering about why sometimes there were bigger pommels on certain cutting swords, bear in mind they also do have an effect on the way they are gripped in a hand. So things like a cross guard will add some degree of leverage. So if I'm holding the sword in a hammer grip, when I'm pushing and pulling forwards and backwards for that cutting action from the wrist, uh, pushing and with the pushing and pulling against, well, not pushing and pulling, the pushing against the actual cross guard, either with the back of the hand when you're pushing it forward, or with the front of the hand when you're pulling it back, that helps. But also the pommel can have the same thing. So when you look at Saxon and Viking swords, um, that type of, as they call, tea cosy shaped pommel, it also adds a leverage, so with the bottom of your hand you're pushing against it in one direction or the other, and it's actually helping you in that hammer grip to leverage with the sword. So, it's an imp important thing to bear in mind that the shape of the pommel affects the way the sword handles with the way you've got the leverage. If you've got something more like a sabre type of pommel, then you're expecting to have the hand extended rather than like this in a hammer grip, more like this in, I guess, a sort of a, a handshake or sort of sabre or pistol type of grip. And that changes the way that you use the sword compared to other designs. So those are reasons why the shapes, the pommels are there, and they can look bulky, but there are pommels historically which were hollow. There were designs of pommels which were perhaps quite broad, but, you know, they might be quite stubby, so they weren't as heavy as people imagine. Or, we are looking at something that is designed to be back-weighted. So we're looking at heavier, bulkier pommels. To take a sword of a normal design, perhaps a blade that was scavenged, or, you know, a blade that has been made by a smith, that has some cutting and thrusting capability, so it's a fairly typical, generic sword, and someone thinks, I want to stab with that, not cut with it. Heavier pommel brings the weight back, so it becomes a thrusting blade. But don't make the mistake of thinking that a bigger pommel, an overweight bulky pommel, will make for a better cutting sword. So that's that. Um, I seem to be not getting many wishes recently, so if you have any requests for video topics, feel free. And I will discuss them as soon as I can. Turn off for now.